Okay, so day two of the class. Uh, previously, we started with a blank document and started to code. This time, we're going to have a bit of a starting point so that we're not uh, having to do everything over from the beginning. And we we're going to quickly go into a phase where we can create an interface a lot faster, a lot easier. What we did last time was very, very basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, we can go much faster but not a whole lot more difficult, just faster. So the way the, the class works, remember, we're going to use Notepad++, or if you have your own computer, you can use your own coding software. But go ahead and go to your Start menu and search for Notepad++. Start, search Notepad++. Get a brand new, we get the Notepad window, and then we'll go to File, New, we need a new blank document. So inside of Notepad++, new document, we will save as. Hopefully you brought a USB flash drive to take the work with you. If you didn't, you can email it to yourself, upload it to your Dropbox. Um, I'll put my code in the folder at the end of the day, usually, so that you can compare your code with my code. File, save as. I'm going to save to the desktop, and I'm going to call this uh, today, June 15th. Um, dot HTML. Remember to add this dot HTML. A couple of times last Tuesday, uh, I saw the code people's code didn't quite work uh, when you're missing the dot HTML. So remember to add dot HTML and also set the save as type as hypertext markup language. I'm going to save that. We will start with the basic nine lines or so, and then we will upgrade it to using our starting point, which I'll explain in a moment. So just for the practice, remember we have the tag of doc type HTML. So we have the angle brackets, exclamation point, doc type, space HTML. We had the HTML tag, which had a pair. We had the head block, which had a pair. The body block. So we did this previously. So setting up the most basic structure of an HTML project. Yes? Uh, on the notepad. Plus, plus, you should not first find the language from the uh, bar and find HTML? Either or, because if as soon as you do save as, you have you choose one of them, and it doesn't seem to matter which you choose first. I typed it first, and then I chose the language, and it seemed to work. It should work either way. So the file name, you choose, you can choose any file name. Any file name, but the extension, it should be .html. Okay, when this is .html, then direct is going to HTML9. Yes. Because in some way, the first steps, they find the language mm -hmm. from that bar. And in that case, we should not write down the document file. Is it right? I've seen it. I teach at another college, and over there, we're using Notepad also, and there was a bug that I saw. When people first chose HTML only, it did not automatically put .html, and it didn't know the language. So I think there's some bug, depending on the version. So I feel safer typing it and selecting the language. That way you're sure you have the right language. <clears throat> this is the code we have so far. We're going to add a tag here we didn't last time, but if you had um, tested your work in Firefox and checked the debug console, it might have given you a weird message about character encoding. Well, we'll deal with that now. Technically, right now, we've said we're using HTML, but we're not quite saying what languages or what alphabets characters we're using. So we should specify what characters we want to use you know, letters in the English language, 
or the Cyrillic alphabet, or the Japanese alphabet, etc. So we'll back up to the head section. We'll add another tag. This is a meta, meta tag, M-E-T-A. Does not have a pair. This is one of the cases that does not have a pair, like image. Image didn't have a pair, but image had something else that made it work. What was that? Source, which is an attribute. So we need an attribute for meta as well, which is C-H-A-R-S-E-T. Car set, or char set, some people say, or care set. Character set. This is the set of characters that I wish to use in this document. Equals quotes, that's our syntax. A tag with an attribute and a value. So image source, source is the attribute. Here, uh, in theory, we would specify, you know, English, etc. Let's say. But we're going to use a very common one that is universal, that has quote-unquote all the languages, UTF-8. This just means our set of characters that we can use in this document is basically all of them. Uh, <laughs> letters in the English language, Spanish with, you know, accent marks and such, Hebrew letters, Japanese letters, Cyrillic alphabet, etc. We could specify... Uh, character set only, let's say, for Hebrew, if we were targeting an app that was only going to target that language. This is, in short, the best one to use. You can make a note at the end of the line. Character set. UTF-8. I forget what it stands for. Extra credit if someone looks it up. Not really. Don't bother. UTF-8. <laughs> or did you have it? Could be. Yeah, I, I don't have it memorized, but it so sounds right. So 10, 10 bonus points for you. Uh, so car set. We're using a character set of UTF-8. All the symbols, all the characters. There are other ones, like UTF-16, which even has symbols of like languages that are extinct. You know, the Easter Island language, which is extinct, is in UTF-16 but it uh, loads more data, which could then slow down our project. So this is what we want. This is what Firefox was complaining about previously if you went into the debug panel. That first message, it says, you have not defined your character types or character set, which is that. Next line, uh, title tag, the title of our document. We'll call this intro to jQuery Mobile jQuery Mobile is the framework, the starting point, the template that we're going to use to be able to create interfaces a lot faster. We can learn a bunch of HTML and a bunch of CSS to be able to make cool columns and headers and all of that design, or we can use jQuery Mobile, which will let us do the same a lot faster. jQuery Mobile is related to jQuery, and as I said previously, jQuery, its motto is write less, do more. Write less code to do more, jQuery. jQuery Mobile is uh, part of that same sort of team project, but focused on ma making mobile interfaces quicker. Um, the way this will work... Here's a new tag, section. The section tag is to create a section of content. Let's say in this first section, heading one, I'll write screen one. The basic idea is that when we make our app, we'll have different screens. A home screen, an about screen, a product screen, you know, a map screen, whatever. Those screens are going to be delineated with section tags. A section is basically a screen in our app. Section tag for a screen in our app.
if you've had much experience in HTML throughout the years, this is a this is a new tag. This is an HTML5 specific tag in, invented in around 2012, 2011 or so, and now uh, used to specify, for example, screens of an app. Older web browsers wouldn't understand the section tag and would ignore it. So we're dealing with modern devices. You know, when we when we talk about vendor prefixes and modern HTML5 fallbacks and all of that, we're often talking about dealing with projects that go to web browsers that are old. And old is Internet Explorer 6, Internet Explorer 7, Firefox version 3, Chrome version 1. We're talking about those old browsers. Firefox is on like version 45, Chrome is like on 48, Internet Explorer is on 12. So sometimes you, you learn in various tutorials about don't forget about fallbacks and don't forget about vendor prefixes and all of that to cover the bases, to cover the old browsers. And my motto is to heck with old browsers. We're not going to deal with Internet Explorer 6. We're not going to deal with Firefox 3. We're not going to deal with these old browsers. Therefore, I'm not going to deal with vendor prefixes or fallback code and that sort of thing. I'm going with the latest cutting edge, which is a mobile device. These things are updated all the time. You go to bed, you wake up the next day, and it tells you've got an update. And most of us do it. And eventually we're forced to do it. You can't push next time forever. You get a brand new version of a phone with the latest code. So therefore, I focus on the latest version of the code, not this older code to try to hang on to people with old devices not even old devices, old browsers, Internet Explorer 6 and 7 and Firefox 3 and all of that stuff that doesn't matter for us in mobile. Yes, there are people all over the world that still use the old browsers. We're not targeting them. We're using mobile devices. So all that is to say old browsers wouldn't understand section. We're dealing with newer devices. <coughs> Let's create another section. Heading 1, screen 2. You often only use a heading one one time per document, like, um, like this printout right here can be defined in HTML. And at the very top, there's a heading one. This heading one defines the whole document. And we have various other headings throughout it. Well, here, because we're dealing with different sections, it's like we're dealing with page one and page two, two different pages. So each of these can have a heading one. If there were no different sections, we should only use one H1 through the whole document. But with different sections, we can reuse heading one. Is it, is it that neat for optimization purposes to have H1 on each section? You mean search engine optimization? Yeah. We're not dealing with search engines. We're eventually going to mobile devices. So with search engines, it may, if we're dealing with web projects, so but eventually. Well, we, where we are designing an app in order to make it more search engine optimized, it would matter to use each one on each section. No, not quite, because again, uh, we are making an app and we want it to be found, yes. But the app itself is not what's going to be found. It's going to be the listing or the website or the, you know, the store listing in the app store. That should be optimized, definitely. The app itself you know, we're not quite optimizing the app, we're optimizing the listing or the location of where the app exists, which we will cover eventually. If I save this, if you save this and run this, if you're new, the way we do that is you run and launch a browser. Anyone you like, I'm going with Firefox, just it's the first one at the top, and that keyboard shortcut, Control alt shift x Just save it and run it. Or launch the browser, that is. We have this result, and I'm saying different pages, different pages. Well, they show up in the same screen because we're not quite there yet. But this is what we should see so far. You've got the intro to jQuery on the title. You've got screen one, screen two. They're not behaving like different screens yet. That's okay. We're not there yet. But this is what I have so far basic document. We're going to make sections for screens. 
the magic will come from jQuery Mobile, which we sort of need to activate. So the way we use jQuery Mobile, we can do it in a couple of ways. What we can do is we can either download the file or we can connect to the file online. We're going to connect with, to the file online and then later we will download it. So there's a file. There's a couple of files, a couple of libraries we're going to connect to so that we can use the power of jQuery Mobile. Let's back up to the head. New line 6. We're going to create another meta tag. Meta tags do not have pairs, but they have attributes. So we've got name, attribute, and content attribute. jQuery Mobile has a focus on mobile apps for devices. So we're going to set a meta tag that also optimizes our project for mobile devices. Meta name is viewport. Remember that the viewport is the body. What is visible on the main screen is the body. We're going to do something about the body. You're going to edit or control. Content initial dash scale equals 1. Whenever you visit a website on your mobile device, in the web browser, let's say, so I've got, a, I've got an Android device. I load up Chrome, I go to a website. You visit, your, you visit a website in your browser. Have you ever visited a website that the text is tiny and you can't see it until you zoom in? Well, that's because that website was not mobile friendly. It was not optimized for a small device like this. Therefore, everything's really small, you have to zoom in. Initial scale is us saying the content of the viewport should be initially zoomed in to 100%. So instead of us having to zoom in manually, it does it for us, basically, zoom in to 100% initial scale. comma, space, user-scalable, equal no. On a website, we have the ability to zoom in and out of a website. We're not making a website. We're making an app. You cannot zoom into the Facebook app. It's there, the right size on your device. On Instagram, you can't pinch and zoom in to zoom into the Instagram logo. It's all properly designed for the project, for the device. That's what we're setting up here. Set up our zoom 100%, and then also set it up so that we cannot zoom in and out. We will be able to zoom in and out other ways, but I'm talking about the main interface. I don't need to zoom in to the home button to, to look at it, but I can zoom in on the content, which will be later. This is to set up the interface looking good on the device comma, one more content value here, with equals device dash width. This also stretches the viewport, meaning anything in the body, stretches it out wide to fit the device. This is another way we're making it mobile friendly. And if we go landscape, you know, the, the content will stretch out landscape. If we're on a tablet, it'll stretch out to the device. It'll be 100% zoomed. It will not let the user zoom in and out. It'll stretch itself out to to the device width. Can you set it to rotate? Uh, yes, that'll be a little bit later where we can lock the rotation or uh, detect the orientation change and all of that. So all of this line here is a very important line. I'll make a comment on the next line. Standard mobile-friendly meta tag. What we just wrote is a meta tag to make our project mobile friendly. 
because that's, that's ultimately what we're doing, making an app that'll look good on devices. If you were to check it in the browser, nothing really changes. Our project is not complex enough to show a difference. Uh, but we've set up a mobile friendly viewport. We're going to connect to the jQuery mobile libraries online so that we can use them pretty quickly. Next line link tag, which does not have a pair, but attributes. Previously we made a link, you click on an item, and it goes to a website. That is a, that is a hyperlink. This is a different kind of link. This is a link basically to a library, a link to a file, specifically a CSS file. So we have link rel, relationship. The relationship of this link is that it's a style sheet. We're going to link our current document to a style sheet. href. Later we will download these source files and make them part of our project. For the moment we'll link to the online versions. So we're going to type a long address here and you want to triple check your spelling because it does count, http colon slash slash code dot jquery dot com slash mobile slash one dot four dot five slash jquery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot css. Rolls off the top. That is the address ultimately to a CSS file. When we were here on Tuesday, we played a little bit with CSS. We changed background colors. What else did we do? Drop shadows. That was CSS code. And we had made inline CSS. To an element, we wrote CSS onto it. And I had said inline CSS or JavaScript is not recommended, but it got the job done. Embedded JavaScript is when we created a block called script, and we wrote JavaScript in that block. That was better. We could do that also with CSS. We have a style block. And the third thing we can do is external CSS or JavaScript, linking to some external file. That's often the better way to do it. One central file where all your CSS or JavaScript is written and those files connected to your HTML files. It's better for maintaining your code and updating your code in the future. You obviously have to type it correctly or it won't work. And if their server goes down, your project won't work. We're relying on someone else's link. Later on, we will download the files for ourselves so that we don't have that problem. For the moment, we'll use the online version. The way uh, jQuery Mobile will work is with three files, a CSS file and two JavaScript files. So we're going to type something very similar before the end of body. So line 17, script. I'll keep that in one line. It does have a pair. Script has a pair. Previously, we wrote the script tag, and we wrote a bunch of our own code to make a button work. Remember all that code we wrote to make one button work? Well, script tag is also used to link to external JavaScript files. And we have a file on a server that we're going to reference. It's written a little bit different. Okay, inside the script tag, attribute of script is src instead of href. 
http colon slash slash code dot jquery dot com slash jquery dash two dot two dot four dot min dot js js javascript So we're loading a style sheet file that has all the design for a jQuery mobile project. Then we're loading a library of jQuery so that we can load another JavaScript file for the interactivity of jQuery mobile. Next line, another script tag. also needs a source. A little time saver here. If you copy the href link, copy that down to the script, but it ends in .js instead of CSS. So you can retype line 8 again or copy the code, copy the link, except for the .css part, and paste it Make sure it's .js. The one at the top, line 8, we'll make notes in a moment. Line 8 ends in .css. Very important. The one I just wrote right now ends in .js. Very important. Not .css. <coughs> .js. .js. Save it and run it. Not a whole lot changes. You may notice a slight change in colors and fonts if you typed it right. Let me confirm that I typed mine right. Yeah, so here it is before jQuery Mobile. Here it is after. The font changed. The background color changed to a different kind of gray. The text is not completely black anymore. It's like an off black. See that? That's before, that's after. If yours still looks something like that, you didn't quite type it right, I'll put it up in a moment. If this worked, it should look something like that. So let's pause there. Did everyone get the jQuery mobile libraries loaded? Can I ask if the script, there's not um, a closed section? How is it still able to Oh, good eye. That is wrong. I should have closed it. But the web browser, on some per on some Instances is very lenient when it processes the code. So it's the, browser. the browser understood what we meant, so it kind of closed it for me. So I forgot to close it. I should close it. So did everyone get that? Anyone need a little help? You should get a result that looks like this, not like this. Plain white background, gray background like a Times New Roman kind of font, Arial font, black text, slightly black text. That's what you should get. Anyone need any help? Because it's got to be exactly like this or else it won't work. We need to build on this foundation before we go further. All right, let's take a look.
you could replace a moment ago if it was with the wrong color. And then now that you added the color, they went back to the right color. Ooh, and see Thank you. 
All right, so um, let's go on. This is what we've got at this point. Uh, very basic. Uh, it changed our design a little bit here, but it didn't create page one, page two yet. But we're getting there. We saw a moment ago very basic design, and now we've got a slightly different design. This is at least to show you we're about to unlock the power of jQuery Mobile. So jQuery Mobile it are two libraries, a CSS library and a JavaScript library. We also then use the universal jQuery library, like 90% of websites use jQuery. It's just another way to write JavaScript a lot easier, less typing. So jQuery Mobile basically relies on jQuery. I wrote it in this order because this is how it's supposed to be. We load one library first and then another one. So with those three links, we can start using jQuery Mobile. I'm going to make a note at the top. Link to the jQuery Mobile CSS file. Question. It is, yes. It's uh, usable in all our projects without attribution and so forth. Totally open source. So then at the bottom, I will also note link to jQuery and then link to jQuery Mobile. Link to jQuery, which is needed first. for jQuery Mobile. If we have these three lines of code, then we can start to use jQuery. We're going to look at the jQuery, or jQuery Mobile. We're going to look at the jQuery Mobile website a little later. But the point is that now what I can do is sort of upgrade these basic tags. These humble tags, I can upgrade them to do more. I can easily create screens cool buttons with icons, animation from screen to screen, dialog box pop-ups, and you know tool tips and all of that, that I would have to spend a lot of time and effort manually writing HTML and CSS to do. But with a couple of attributes, I will upgrade plain tags to something more interesting. So here's our first one. Section, let's add the attribute data dash roll. You're going to see this attribute a lot. Data roll. The role of this section is that it's now a page. Save it and run it. Let's see the result. If you run that, You should only see screen one now. Screen two still exists, but it's off on its own page. It's the same one document, but in a different space, in a different screen. We have no way to get to it at the moment, but that's going to be links, plus other things, to navigate from screen to screen. So we can make a brand new section a brand new screen in our app simply with data role page. Let's add data role attribute to screen two. Data role, which is basically jQuery mobile. 
page to make to to separate the screens. And whatever is inside of the section tag could be a thousand lines of code, ten thousand. Doesn't matter. Each section can have its own content of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, basically. Visually, we're separating each screen of content. When we start to make the app for real, we're going to have a home screen, we're going to have an about screen, we're going to have uh, the ability to do inventory and take a photo and Bluetooth and all of that. And those are going to be in different screens, different sections with data roll page. If I were to, um, you know, if I run this, you see that there's only screen one. If I were to, for example, mistype any of the uh, libraries over here, let's say, let's say the server went down. We're connecting to the jQuery server. Our um, project then is going to suffer. It's going to go back to normal like this. Uh, data rule has no meaning without the connection to these libraries. So because of these libraries, we have pages, we have sections. Let's say we wanted to link from page 1 to page 2. Well, we would still use the href of the a tag. Uh, and when we made a link previously in href attribute, we had an address to a file or a location. We can link from one section, from one page to another page. What we need first is to give each of these sections a unique ID. We gave a button a unique ID last time. How did we do that? ID. The attribute of ID equals, yes. So section, another attribute, ID equals, call this page one. Does it matter in which order they go? No, but I like to put IDs and classes as the last one, simply because you can find it quicker when you're going through your code. Um, these attributes should not matter. Other things do matter, like CSS and JavaScript, the order. But for attributes, it shouldn't really matter. So I've called this page one. Uh, no spaces in this, because if I put page space one, technically I'm giving it two attributes. That is wrong. One uh, word run together. I could do capital letters, sure, for readability. Oops capital P, that, that'll work. But if you don't remember what you named these in your, in your own capitalization scheme, it may be better to just keep it all lowercase. We need an ID for the second section, page 2. These can be called home, about, products, catalog 1, catalog 2, catalog 99. These can have any names. They're just unique identifiers that we use for two purposes, uh, JavaScript or CSS. So if I wanted to link from section from, from screen 1, section 1, to screen 2, let's add an A tag. It's going to be a link. Let's say go to screen 2. The link is not complete. What am I missing? Href. Href attribute. Pound page 2. The hash mark. The number symbol. The number symbol basically, you can think about it as synonymous with ID. ID equals page 2. Let's link to ID page 2. Save it and run it. You should see a link on your section 1. And if you click the link, it should go to section 2.
if you typed it right, of course. We might need to get used to using F12 in the browser to check the debug console for it to give us error messages to help us figure out our error. So let's see here, I'm going to save and run that. Screen 1, go to screen 2, if I click on that, it goes to screen 2. Uh, if I press back, I'm back on screen one. Do you notice a little subtle animation between both screens? A little fade animation instead of it just simply appearing? That is again because of jQuery Mobile. It's built in a little basic transition to go from screen to screen like an app. We were, we're going to see as we get deeper into jQuery Mobile we can use plain old HTML that you might have learned in other classes, and we can write our own hundreds of lines of code to make it do what we want. Or we can use a library like this as a starting point. We just need to know the right attributes and other syntax of the library to get it to work. And jQuery Mobile is not the only one. There's a bunch of other really famous ones out there. Ionic, Sencha, Onsen. Every, every month, it seems, there's a brand new jQuery library. Uh, a brand new library, JavaScript library, to help you do something. Someone's got some free time, oh, they made a brand new library. But jQuery is like, again, like 90% of the websites use this in the world. jQuery Mobile, that's another like 75 to 90% of the world. So uh, the, there's many ways to do this. Any programming language, there's many ways to skin the digital cat. Many ways to write the code. This is one of the ways. what we can do further with, J with jQuery Mobile. We've got a plain old link. Let's upgrade the link. Let's add another attribute to, to the A tag. Data-roll of button. Save it and run it. See what we get. data roll, data dash roll, button. With data roll button, your humble um, link before and after has become a button with a rollover and a drop shadow and an effect and the functionality of a button. You also see a little animation happen when you click the button, it becomes blue for a moment. All of this is editable, of course. We're starting off with the generic jQuery mobile theme. This is gray on light gray, on dark gray. But we are able to, of course, choose any colors, alignment, sizes, all of that stuff. Right now we're just starting with the basic idea, and we can customize it fully. Let's add another attribute, this time data-icon. jQuery Mobile has about 50 icons built in, and we can make any icons we want. One of these icons, off the top of my head, user. Save it and run it. This will put a little icon of a user in your button. Later on, we'll look up the whole documentation to learn every aspect of jQuery Mobile. But user, data icon, user, puts an icon. I want it on the right. Well, we just write a little more code. Less code than we had if we had to invent our own CSS. We want our own custom icon, the company logo. We can do that. We just need to learn the proper jQuery mobile code to do that. So user gives you a user icon. See, here's another one. Home, camera, all of these sort of basic actions have a built-in icon. There's about 50. There's some arrows also. And a left arrow, up arrow. I could design my own, or I could just use the one that's built in. So how would you link to the ones you designed? 
we would have to write more lines of CSS to specify the path to the file, like a PNG file. And then uh, instead of it being data-icon, we'd have to write something like data, I think it's data-icon-myicon, you know, specify our own data element attribute, and then define a path in CSS, and it'll be our icon. So we'll see how to do it, but uh, we can do it definitely. So imagine we're making an app and we want a button to take a photo or scan a barcode. Eventually, uh, I forgot to say last time, but eventually together we're working toward a project together. And on the side you can be working on your own project. But together we're going to make an app that is going to be a sort of inventory tracking system. doesn't sound so much fun, but we, we will make it fun. We're going to have an app where we can track uh, data, scan barcodes, save information to a database, have user roles, so different people can have their own data, log in, log out. Um, I'll have the example for you to look at on that soon. But let's say we needed a way to take a photo, we've got an icon for that. Here's something else. Data-transition. This is the animation. The current default animation is fade. If you add the animation slide, the transition slide, check the result there. Transition slide, the screen will slide into view instead of fade in. We can uh, alter the, the speed and the direction and all of that, of course. But as a starting point, that right away uh, is very interesting. Let's see, so slide, I click the button, slides into view. I press back, it, it animates the opposite way. We have these other ones, pop. Some of them won't look that great yet because we don't have a lot of content to look at. But pop, we will use later when we make pop-ups. So here, if you click that, it should be like the screen kind of pops into view again. There's not much to look at, so you don't see it very well. but pops in, pops out of view. We'll go look at the official documentation later. There's about six built-in animations, and we can make our own, but that that's a lot harder than making your own icons. You can make your own animations like a star wipe or some other kind of dissolve, but we'll look at it later. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. The, um, the thing that's happening is that we've got a section which is dividing one screen from another. Oftentimes you have apps, and within a screen you've got divisions within the screen of areas. You often have an area at the top, maybe some sort of area down at the foot, the main content area in the middle. We can divide up our screen to different areas. There's a very easy way to do it with the right tags. Let's say, before uh, that href, give yourself a line, and let's wrap a new tag around screen one. Let's add a new tag here, an HTML tag of header. Open, close header, and then I'll tab screen one to show myself that this is part of this. We're about to create a header area, an area at the top of the app, the header area. Header is a tag that does not have anything inherently built in, no design. Its, it's uh, purpose is to delineate sections of content. Header, header area, section area, we have footer area, other things. The way we then upgrade it is with jQuery mobile. And we have a data role of header. The purpose of header, its role is to be a header as defined by jQuery mobile. The purpose of section is to be a page as defined by jQuery mobile. 
head, section and header have no nothing inherently built in. We saw that a moment ago uh, before we had connected any of the libraries. Section screen one and screen two were on the same screen. They didn't have any special meaning. If you save and run this, you're starting to design a new header area at the top of your screen. At the top we've got an area that's set aside. The text is centered. There's a divider. All of that can be edited. That'd be a nice place up there for a nav bar or other navigation icons, which we'll get to, of course. But now, starting with that humble HTML document, we're, we're upgrading it pretty quickly to start to make some sort of app interface. Um, so we're sort of combining HTML and CSS together using jQuery Mobile, the appropriate attributes as defined by jQuery Mobile. The functionality of it to take the photo, to scan the barcode, to connect with another device via Bluetooth. That'll be JavaScript eventually. And all of this HTML project will be bundled and properly compiled to each device when we get to that aspect. Cordova, to take our web projects and bundle them properly for every device. Android, iPhone, Windows, even Mac OS, Linux, every device, really based on HTML. Let's uh, take our first break. If you didn't quite get it to work, call me over. We'll be back at 7.10, and we'll go on. 7.20. <laughs>